Have you renounced Satan? What I mean when I ask this question is, have you turned your back on the world? Now, this is a question that was incredibly important in the early church, and it's just as relevant for us as Christians today. Hey there, everyone. My name is Dwayne Bryan. It's good to see you again. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, you can click the button in the lower right-hand corner of your screen, tap the bell, and you'll get a notification every time I post something new. Well, our theme verse for today is Acts chapter 3, verses 19 to 21. Repent, therefore, and turn back, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all the things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. According to the 4th century preacher John Chrysostom, people being baptized would go through a formal ceremony to renounce their pagan way of life. They would look toward the West and say, I renounce you, Satan, your pomps, your service, and your works. Then they would turn the opposite direction and face east and say, I enter into your service, O Christ. The pomps referred to the pagan religious processions. Historically, this had been an important part of public life in both Greece and Rome. Religion was a very visible affair to everyone in the community. The service that Chrysostom mentioned indicated pagan worship. They were now going to worship Jesus instead of false gods. The works were worldly deeds that were products of a pagan lifestyle. So by making this declaration, the person being baptized was telling the entire world that he or she was repudiating everything worldly and unchristian. Now, Chrysostom wasn't the only one who looked at conversion in this way. A number of influential early theologians in the church used similar wording. Instead of calling Satan by name, some of them used the term ancient enemy. But regardless of the terminology used, their renunciation of the world and the orientation of the person's body both sent the same message. It visibly demonstrated just how opposed God and the world really are. Now, the gesture was more than symbolic. It visibly represented the distance that they and we must put in between ourselves and sin at all times. The Bible includes instructions to put as much distance between evil and ourselves as possible. The book of Proverbs says, do not swerve to the right or to the left. Turn your foot away from evil. That's in chapter 4 and verse 27. But it also says, by the fear of the Lord, one turns away from evil. Chapter 16 and verse 6. Paul tells Timothy to flee youthful passions and avoid associating with ungodly people. He tells the Corinthians to flee sexual immorality and idolatry. He also tells the Thessalonians to be mindful about even giving the appearance of wrongdoing. In other words, don't do anything that could be misinterpreted as sin by the casual observer. Now, Jesus calls us to turn our backs on sin, but our culture has a way of making it attractive. And one way of doing this is to downplay the importance of goodness. Some people equate innocence with naivete. They portray Christians as inexperienced, gullible, or idealistic people who don't quite understand how the world works. Others will say to a person who is pure, well, you're just a do-gooder or a goody two-shoes trying to make the rest of us look bad. And if you're righteous, well, that's just because you think you're better than other people, and you certainly don't want to be one of those. Well, another way the world makes sin attractive is to give it the appearance of goodness. Sin isn't really bad. It makes you feel good. Sin means you can let your hair down. You don't always have to be so stuck up, always having to meet somebody else's expectations. I mean, you don't have to be a monk or a nun to be a decent person, right? Well, some people think that innocence is unrealistic or even childish. In truth, renouncing Satan doesn't mean making ourselves ignorant. It's the conscious decision to resist the world's charms and temptations. It also means to participate in a spiritual battle against an ancient and powerful enemy. 
Well, renouncing Satan means to reject death and destruction and to embrace everything good and noble that God has planned for our lives. You see, turning our back on the world isn't a loss. It's a gain, both in this life and in the next one. Well, everyone, as always, thank you for spending a little bit of your day with me. I'll see you next time.